Hello, everybody out there. I'm Angie from the Chasing Meeples podcast, and I have stuff on my mind that I need to stop talking to myself about, and I want to start talking to you. So hopefully I'll stop thinking about it then. And I have something I was going to put up on Instagram, but I don't think I've done it yet, so I'm just going to say it now. I gave beer and bread an eight on our review on our latest podcast. You haven't heard it yet. Yes, it is up. Episode 11. Beer and bread, we did a review. I gave it an eight. And I'm going to tell you why I gave it an eight. It has such an interesting way of hand management. You're going to go between a fruitful year and a lean year, and you're going to take turns doing a drafting mechanism. And on the opposing year, you're just going to use that same set of cards, and then you won't draft. And when you score, you're going, because you're making beer and you're making bread, you think normally you total them up, and whoever has the most points wins. No, you're going to total your beer, you're going to total your bread. And then whichever one is the least, you will add some end game points to, and that is your score, and that's what you're scoring against your opponent. So it's so interesting. It's clever, but it's broken. And maybe broken isn't the right word, but Scott Alms is not a first time designer. And I would have guessed, unless this never happened during play testing, that you can get stuck on this game. Now, you play games which are skirmish games, battling games, and you're used to dying. Your character dies. That happens. Generally, you don't. And I've never really been in a game that I was truly stuck. There are try use cards. So my thought was, this is wonderful. I'm always gonna have something to do. I can use it for the resource. I can use it for the recipe of beer or bread, or there's a special power or benefit it can give you when you slide it underneath the board. I came to, when I'm thinking fruitful, lean, fruitful so I'm thinking it was about the third round and I and when you get the resources and you stack your cards you can get like a double the resources you can get resources from the previous cards you laid down so you can harvest like twice I had a bin full of rye leave it with rye could have been barley and there are on some of the try use cards, you can get an extra storage, one extra storage. So I think you get about eight storage areas in your bin, and then I had one extra. So I had pretty much <laughs> eight rye and one water. As I'm realizing, I could not make anything. I could not keep harvesting. So there was only one thing I could do, is that I could keep putting my cards and using them for their powers, but a lot of them were not necessarily the best benefits, but that was all I can do. And it wasn't until I started to get very frustrated when I realized I'm playing cards and I can't do anything. And it wasn't until the next round, because on the lean years, you have an extra three cards up by the market area and those cards you can trade. So if you need to trade off a card, you can always trade off a card. And it happened to be that a card was flipped over and it was some recipe and it took like eight rye. That's it, like eight rye and one water. It was a miracle. I could get rid of the food in my bin and I could make something and start progressing in the game or keep participating in the game because had I been stuck had that card not been there 
I literally would have kept going each round without anything to do except shoving cards, shoving cards underneath it. I was very frustrated and I was getting frustrated and it was complete luck. And that's what cards, when you get cards, any card game, it's luck. But if that card hadn't just shuffled through there, I wouldn't have been able to make anything. That was very frustrating. And I, so I, I thought, I thought it was just me. I thought it was just me. I thought, you know what? I'm just not playing the game well enough. And then I heard on another program, somebody I respect a lot had said about the game and he did not like it. It was a six and he got rid of it right away. And one of the things he said that he got stuck. And I'm thinking that's exactly, and it wasn't just me. Like I just said, I thought it was just me. It wasn't, here's somebody who's a lot more experienced at gameplay as me, and he got stuck. And so here we both have the same problem with this game. He ditched it and I kept it. I feel like I need to somehow beat the game. I need to play it again and make sure that I'm really balancing. Do not over harvest. I can't say it enough. Do not over harvest in this game. I did occur to me at the first time. I'm just pulling in resources. I'm so excited. But don't over harvest in, the, in this game. And I wish when I heard a review of it, somebody would have said it and I would have really stuck with me. So don't over harvest. And it's just amazing. It's not amazing the fact that two people have the exact same problem with this game. Now, I feel like I need to conquer the game, which doesn't make much sense because the only time you really need to beat a game is when you're playing solo. So the fact that I need to play this game again because I need to beat it. Not being Chris, but beat this game. It's not going to get me. And then I'm not sure where it's going. And the rating may go down. I still really think this game has got a lot going for it. I think there should have been a way that like a market, if you were a farmer, you would maybe go to a market and you would have traded your goods and they could have done a resource swap. You could have done two rye to get one barley. Um, something like that, given something back, you could have offered it to your neighbor if he didn't want it. And maybe you'd have to take a negative point at some point, but there should have been a way for you to dispose of the some dispose of some of those things in your storage bin. That was really something that was lacking, and it should have been when it play tested. It should have been addressed at that point. So beer and bread. Bizarrely, I really really like the game, even though I'm going to say it's broken. I'm not sure if that's the right word for it, but okay. So that's beer and bread. The other thing I was really thinking about because I've got a prototype here that Chris and I have been playing. I'm just really neat to get a prototype sent to you. Earth. A lot of people have been talking about Earth. And I said the game was meh. I played it once. And it was, now let me address this straight out. It is not a Ark Nova killer. It's not a terraforming Mars killer. It's not a wingspan killer. It is so difficult for me even to find things that are similar in those games. Uh, Terraforming Mars, I think I can get the most connections. And that is the fact that you put LG on cards and you, you can collect them. Um, microbes. And in Earth, you can put microbes on a card. That is pretty much where the similarities end. Yes, you have realistic card art. 
that's nothing to compare another game to. That's just silly. Other than that, you activate cards in Terraforming Mars. You're not building a tableau, which you have to build in Earth. Um, and really reaching in wingspan, you're building an aviary, um, you're building an engine. That's not really what's going on in Earth. So I was disappointed, especially because there was a lot of height surrounding it. But there is a recommended first time playing. You play a certain, like a basic, a beginner mode. And there is a set of cards that you don't put in the, um, on the player board. I tell you what, I don't even know what those cards actually do because it was recommended not to play with them the first time. Could they have improved the game? Maybe. Uranus flaw, falling. This game has also a recommended uh, level one novice to play it, to start with. So you get an idea of the gameplay. Now this game is something different than I have ever played before. It has it's a battling game. It is area control, area majority type of thing. Not so much area majority, but area control. And I don't really like that. But I find that I like that in this game. But like I said, the first game I played, I did one of those two-handed things I had told everybody about. And it was good. But I realized if I was going to teach this to Chris, that it would be a little bit underwhelming. And it might come to the point where would you even want to go any further? Now, if you, and it had me thinking that way, that if you're a person that plays games that are a little bit on the heavier, maybe medium to heavy, that's where you find comfort, you know, sight. And I don't know why I'm always thinking of Scythe as the way to explain it, but if you do Shem Phillips games, which can be on the heavier side. If you are, um, you know, like uh, Great Western Trails, Yarnos Falling is not like those games at all, but it's the same weight. If you play at the higher level, when you play... At the basic level, it is something that maybe if you're comfortable with wingspan and that is your comfort zone, start at the novice. But if you are comfortable, if you enjoy that part of a gameplay where you have some thinking and you have a lot of things to do and you're good at handling multiple, multiple options, I can handle different levels of play. I can skip this. I, movement is not a problem with you. Badly and skirmishing enough of these. This game is not difficult once you understand it. But I think it's going to suffer from those gamers that enjoy not even heavy games. I'm thinking medium heavy. Like I said, like that scythe. People that can play that weight of a game. This novice level, I think, will be too simple. And I don't think there's going to be enough meat in it. So when you have a recommended starting point, I think instead of just saying we recommend you start down this way, I'm thinking that you should say something. And I, I guess I don't know how you would word it, but if you're comfortable at a certain weight of game, start at the second level. I can see people being like I was with Earth. I was turned off because my first play was, mm, it was okay. Now I will play Earth again with the cards, but I'm already going into it with a feeling of, I don't know if I'm gonna like this game. So I'm always kind of going in already with a negative feeling. So I think that, and this is the way I feel, and this is what I've been talking about myself to up myself about a lot, is that how do you word that? And I believe 
it's my opinion i'd be really interested in what everybody else thinks about these starter levels i know i can't think of what game it is i don't think i own it there was a game a game you know maybe it was like a year ago and like literally i remember hearing a podcast about it or maybe i was even listening to a youtube channel as i was driving home from work and they were talking about the starting level and that it was a little underwhelming and not even whoever was talking said don't even bother starting at that level because you're going to be underwhelmed and if you feel underwhelmed at a game you're not going to really want to continue with it and that's the way I feel, but I'd be really interested to hear what everybody else feels about these starting levels. Um, and that's what I've been thinking about a lot today and yesterday. And I finally had to get it out because I don't want to talk to myself about it anymore. So I feel like now I get it out, talking to you, get your opinion. I would love to hear a comment down in the comments. You can do it on my Instagram. We have an email at chaseymeeples at yahoo.com. I would love if some of you people would listen to our podcast. You could comment, uh, follow, subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube. Something just fell. That was weird. That's the one. That's just weird. You didn't see like a spider crawl down my neck or anything, I hope, because it was just kind of weird. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to pretend that that never happened, whatever it was. Very unusual thing happened around my neck. Hmm. <laughs> but I have, we have a game of Yarnus Falling um, still in progress. It is set up on our table and we're going to get back to it tomorrow but i will definitely talk to you more about it when we finish it up um we will probably we get two weeks um with a prototype and this one we're not having to do a video or anything about it so we're just going to be talking about it giving um some of our feedback about it throwing out some pictures but we do have another prototype coming and it's coming sooner than expected it could be here by thursday already so i'm going to try to get as many plays of this in before the next one comes because we only going to do about 10 days with it and in that one we're not only going to play it preview it and do a video for their kickstarter again on stinky board games um excited to be working with them again and i think this is going to be a fun game we've been playing a lot of and i'm not going to say heavy games but you know distilling alcohol and distilled i was playing um Tiledum, and that's traveling around europe I played Woodcrafters, where you are small forest nymphs or something like that, creating wood, um, you know, beer and bread. And um, here, your shaman battling out. So I think Earth. So I think maybe some animal, animal, little animals, cute animals. For some reason that word doesn't want to pop out of my mouth right now. And from a port. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. For some reason that word, it's 11.30 at night. The word's not coming to me. So I don't want to keep trying. But talk to you more about this. And I'll give you more insight into a Raccoon Restaurant. By Dinky Board Games. I'm excited to sink my teeth into that one to get some more plays of this one in. So it's going to be a busy week for us. Normally, our podcast, and for all you folks that follow us, I know you all do. We had a 
little hiccup with our last show and Chris had to redo the audio and took him a while. So it actually first published uh, Friday, I think it was. And then we recorded on Saturday and the new podcast should be out on Wednesday. He's probably going to want to get it edited and out Wednesday. He shouldn't. We need to play this again. And he shouldn't really push himself to get something out. And I don't want to say inferior, but I think in his quest to do something maybe a little quicker, to find a program or something like that that's going to make his job simpler, it did something in the processing. And it wasn't as good as it normally is. And he normally does a wonderful job with the audio, but he does everything essentially, you know, I, okay, I don't know. Let me face it. I don't know. I do watch him do it. And I always think what he does it because he just, he's up here for hours. And I feel like, you know, maybe I should do this. I could do this. I could help you with it. And then I watch him do it. And he's, you know, Peter's, he's clicking and this and the lines and I watch that and um, it would take me all night to quite possibly slice together a small portion so you're not hearing me breathe awkwardly or something like that and then probably end up deleting a whole section of video that was actually funny or audio. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not even going to risk ruining a podcast, deleting it or something like that, because I'm trying to be helpful. I know better. I do. So I don't think it's going to get up on Wednesday, um, but you have essentially the one to listen to episode 11 from Friday. So if you haven't done it yet, and you know you want to, um, you can listen to that one. We do have a lot going on. But that one will go up, um, just not right away. I, so I'm really, really sorry about that. But we have to do some more prototype plays, and we have to create a video that's going to go on Kickstarter. So we want to do that real well. And then Chris does a good job editing that as well. So let me know what you think about these games. Let me know if you've played Beer and Bread. Let me know if you got stuck at all. Am I crazy? Um, am I just a bad game player? I don't think so. At first, I thought it was me. I really thought it was me. But since other people have gotten stuck, I know it's not me. It's the game. Um, I know people love Earth. It's okay, in my opinion. I will give it another chance. Play with that other deck of cards. See what it does. Hopefully it creates it makes it a little bit better. I'm going to get some more plays of this in. Ooh. It didn't fall. It didn't fall. Um, and keep doing different levels, and I have to get a solo play done too. So, thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate any feedback you can give me, and you can find our podcast on just about every podcast player out there uh, Spotify, Apple, Google, Audible, it's even on. I think they're all on YouTube. I think maybe this last one hasn't been put on YouTube yet. But we do have that YouTube channel where you can see these videos, where you can uh, listen to the podcast. I'm on Instagram. We are also on Facebook. And we have that email, chaseymeeples at yahoo.com. Oh, we also have an Etsy store, which is Chasey Meeples Co., where you can find original artwork, um, original t-shirt designs, and board game designs as well as Chasing Meeple merchandise. Thank you for joining me tonight. Bye.